To me, Somalia epitomized the concept of a hot zone, a failed state that had not had a central government for 14 years. It was mired in violence and poverty and absent of hope. Forgotten, it could be like another failed state, Afghanistan, and become a breeding ground for terrorism. It was, I thought, a great place to start, an underreported political basket case with no shortage of guns. I found a fixer named Duga through a friend of mine who had spent a lot of time reporting from Somalia. When I land on this dirt strip, he's there with eight bodyguards to protect me. They carry AK-47 assault rifles and RPK machine guns. Some are wrapped like invincible Rambos and bandoliers of 7.62 rounds. Dugov tells me it's the minimum necessary for me to safely do business here. What do they say, Dugov? They say we don't need one person with a camera inside the market, they say. Our first story is to revisit the site where 12 years earlier, an American Army Black Hawk helicopter had been shot down when a mission against Somali warlord, Mohamed Farah Idid, went terribly wrong. This cactus was planted as a kind of homemade barbed wire. The purpose is to keep people from carrying away what was left of the Black Hawk. The only reason they keep here, they want to ask for some compensation for the United States. They want compensation from the United States, yeah. so they're trying to keep the evidence. Yeah. Why not just take it and put it in uh, safekeeping in a they, house somewhere they, they, or they don't, warehouse? They don't, this is the best place they can, they can keep. Because we don't have a library, we don't have someone they can secure. We meet a woman there named Maria Osman, who says that her three-year-old daughter was crushed when the chopper fell from the sky. <laughs> Is she angry with the Americans because of this? <laughs> Another woman in the crowd shouts that she lost four family members in the fighting that day, including a child. This seems to agitate the crowd that has grown to about 50. Dugif taps me on the shoulder, nods towards the truck. We leave just as voices grow louder and angrier. Many are concerned that Somalia's anarchy is creating opportunities for Islamic fundamentalists like Sheikh Hassan Dahir Awais, head of the Union of Islamic Courts. It's a group the U.S. says has ties to al-Qaeda. At his compound before our interview, he asked me if I'm an American and a Jew. He looks at me as if I were a spy, but he does the interview anyway. One of the U.S.-backed warlords in Somalia, Osman Hassan Aliato, also a minister in the interim Somali government, says Awais and other hardcore Islamists are a real threat. If the, if the lawlessness grow up and grow up, uh, people will turn to religion if they want to uh, survive. A little less than a year after my interview with Awais, he and his Union of Islamic Courts took control of Mogadishu after a bloody fight against Ato and other U.S.-backed warlords, pushing them out of the capital. <laughs> 